So um, if there's any other way we can help get the word out, we're hoping so. We're hoping you'll take some photos. We'll put the presentation <coughs> online, and we're hoping that you'll give feedback tonight, and uh, we can work together. And I think not to uh, spoil too much of it, but a lot of it was already in our town, uh, was the first thing we wanted to see was that this would be rehabilitated, whether the city did it or rarely, and I think you'll hear some good news. Another piece was having lighting, not lighting that would interrupt anyone's sleep, nothing like a billboard <coughs> shining in somebody's window, but just lighting that was contemporary and kind of like what we see on the High Line. Another piece is uh, I'm kind of obsessed with green walls. You'll start seeing down the Esplanade, uh, all the private partnerships always include green walls. And then a color for public, public design, which is where you come in. And I think the most important piece is it's not about when you get something built, because they built the Esplanade and then they walked away from it and now it's falling into the river. It's about the <coughs> folks who are actually doing the ongoing maintenance. So there's a commitment for ongoing maintenance, whether it's at Rockefeller, HSS, or here. And then the other piece is there's water, <coughs> water everywhere, but the East River is an estuary, which means it is uh, both uh, uh, salt water as well as uh, uh, brackish. brackish. It's brackish water, thank you. Uh, I'm lucky to have such amazing constituents. So the water doesn't support life, and we can't just like reach into the river and use that to water the plants. So we're also hoping to have uh, water. So all of that is amazing news. So at this moment, I would, and so I, I'm hoping that folks will like this partnership. And uh, at this point, I would like to uh, ask. Uh, and, and I think one other key piece, of, if I haven't made it clear enough, uh, our key partner in all of this is our Congress member, Carol Maloney, who's been co-chair of the CC East River Esplanade Task Force. And I'll be honest, it is a lot easier to secure. I think we're up to $150 million when you're, you're engaging that advocacy standing next to your Congress member. Uh, so as I mentioned, all the great work that Civitas has been doing, and I'd like to invite Civitas uh, Alexander Adams to say a few words. I'm going to be really quick, but um, as he said, we've been working for quite a while. Um, we did a master plan with uh, Matthews Nielsen, and this really is another little piece in the puzzle all the way up and down the Esplanade. And a lot of times we say, you know, we plant the seeds and then somebody else waters it and it grows because at Civitas we don't build anything, but we're the ones that come out and get support from the public. We're the ones that go and put ideas out there so that then things like this can come and grow and become something. Um, so it may not be perfect, it, you know, it's, everything always has, uh, you know, it's not exactly as we're going to design all the way from one end to the other, but that has um, some unique qualities as well. So, we're in support of the, uh, the renovation in general, and, um, and that's about all I have. And I'm, Welcome to hear what you guys have to say tonight. Thank you. We can give them a quick round. And uh, one other piece that I just want to say thank you is uh, part of it is having institutional support, but the other piece is every part that is uh, worth its weight uh, usually has a conservancy. And for far too long, the East River Esplanade didn't have one. And uh, I think right before I got elected, Jennifer Ratner, who's with us today, found the friends of the uh, East River Esplanade, and they are a key partner. Uh, as an elected official, believe it or not, I'm not allowed to make a, a shidduch, a Judaism that's called like a mar arranged marriage. So uh, rarely will have an opportunity to make uh, a work with a conservatory partner of their choice, whether it is friends or others. Uh, but uh, we're just glad to have a conservancy that's here to uh, do that work. And so now if you can join me in welcoming up uh, from Rearley, our uh, Director of Construction and Facilities, Doris Coleman, as well as Sydney Nielsen. And uh, so <coughs> a quick thing, uh, if we can let them get through the presentation.
And then at the end of the presentation, we'll take questions and hopefully get a little bit of your feedback on some of the design elements that you like or dislike and how we can improve. Thank you. So welcome everybody. On behalf of Rarely, can you guys hear me? Oh good, Sydney's going to come around. Yeah. Can you hear me or do I need to You need the microphone. Can you hear me now? Okay. Welcome to Burley. We are very excited to have you here. We have been a part of this community since 1929, and we are very excited. As you know, we're building across the street, so to remain a part of this community, where we have long time wanted to improve the pier. Our girls use it daily. It will continue to be in use for as long as Burley is here. So we're excited to share our thoughts now that, you know, as Council Member Kalos mentioned, we have a lease with the city. And um, as we, you know, transfer that lease over and get this project going, we're very excited to take on the improvements for the pier. So I have the honor of introducing Sydney Nielsen. Um, I have her bio here, so I'm going to just read a little bit, and then she's going to come and show the designs that, that we've been working on with her. So Sydney Nielsen has been a long practice, has long been practicing as a landscape architect and urban designer in New York since 1978. Her body of work has renewed the environmental integrity and transformed the quality of spaces for those who live, work, and play in the urban realm. Many of you may know her from her work with Civitas for the East River Vision Plan, which was mentioned earlier. A fellow of the ASLA, she is the recipient of over 100 national and local design awards for public open space projects and has published extensively in national and international publications. Ms. Nielsen is a professor of urban design and landscape architecture at Pratt Institute and currently serves as president for the Public Design Commission of the City of New York. And we are so pleased to work with her and for her to present the, the ideas that we have. And we're eager for your feedback. At the end of the presentation, there will be an email address which goes directly to me and to Joe David, who is at the back of the room, who's Burley's Director of Communications. We continually monitor it. Anybody who sent us an email about the project knows that. And uh, we're eager to hear your thoughts. So with that, I will turn it over to Tammy. Thank you. Good evening. Couldn't be a better evening and uh, view. And here we are looking right at the project. <coughs> um, Thank you. So um, I will uh, start right away. And um, this is what we'll be looking at. Uh, uh, tonight. There basically are two options, uh, and I will explain in those options uh, what we would really appreciate your feedback on. So, our existing condition, which actually you can see from here quite well. Uh, so, some of the uh, goals of the project is to uh, improve the high fence around it. Um, the fact that it is, um, doesn't really contribute to the um, quality of the Esplanade experience. Uh, there has been some rather saggy pigeon netting under there, which is actually removed right now and will be reinstalled temporarily until this is complete. The lighting under it is uh, not, uh, uh, is very poor, and there is no other uh, landscape contribution uh, on the uh, Esplanade. So, um, first goal is to come up with an anti-roosting strategy um, that doesn't have the saggy appearance that you see uh, on the upper left. So that's one of our uh, major uh, goals, and I think that in doing so, we've also uh, really improved the appearance of the underside, as you'll see in a second. So uh, some of the concepts were really about uh, kind of a hanging garden. Um, Councilman Kalos uh, uh, alluded to that of uh, vertical walls, climbing walls, and also um, the idea of hanging gardens. So we'll get to that. So um, we've seen that already. So this is option one that we're calling the green scheme. Um, and I'll just go through it uh, uh, slowly. Um, we start with a, um, a much improved and more uh, transparent fence. Um, there are two backboards on the pier that you'll see in plan. Um, the one on the south side, this is a view looking north, if you were walking. Um, the backboard on this side is four feet high, 
the backboard on the north side is eight feet high. Um, you also see that there are um, a row of planters uh, right up against the fence, and from those planters are uh, vines that will climb up and also plants that will cascade down. Uh, you'll also notice that on the esplanade, uh, there are um, uh, four planters as well. And now you <coughs> see the, where the kind of green comes in. Green is not just plant material. Green is also the color um, that is shown here, and I'll show it in a couple of other views. So essentially, we're using, um, we're using this to create um, the uh, bird proofing and also contribute uh, color. So, as I said, keep your eyes on a couple of things. The choice of planters, the choice of colors, um, and the manner in which plant material uh, is handled at the, um, uh, on the level of the pier. Um, so this is uh, showing you a, a, a uh, sections and plans. So, uh, for those of you that would be interested, this fence is uh, 10 feet high to here, and then one foot seven uh, back. And you see the planters and how the vines are uh, growing uh, uh, over here. So the vines are um, just on the inside of the fence. Um, so now we'll take a look under the um, pier, which is what most of you care about. Um, this is interesting. Um, uh, Councilman Kalos alluded to some of the other improvements that are being made elsewhere uh, on, the, uh, on the Esplanade. And further south, out, out of his district, if you've been down to the um, uh, East River Esplanade, there, um, the facade of the FDR Drive has been painted lavender. And um, light shines on that lavender color <coughs> and creates a really beautiful glow without the glare of lights. So we've taken a similar approach and so um, we are uh, suggesting that the underside where we don't need the netting be painted a light color, in this case because it's a green scheme, uh, it is a green or it could be um, a very light gray. So whether you don't like green or you prefer a light gray, either one of which would help create um, uh, a way to um, uh, spread a glow uh, underneath this um, uh, structure. And this is how it would be lit. So these are LED strips, uh, exactly the same width as the um, uh, recycled plastic lumber strips that are creating uh, the netting. So you'll see there's no fixtures. Uh, nothing is um, creating uh, uh, issues with dark sky or shining into anybody's uh, bedroom, and it'll just be a, a glow underneath the um, space. It's also very cost-effective because it is um, LED. Now, um, in terms of uh, colors, you'll see here um, the colors that make up the uh, uh, recycled plastic lumber uh, slats. You'll see here's where the uh, light, the LED strips are, and then color is not so well. It's not bad in here. Um, so these are uh, what we might be recommending on the underside uh, for that that glow. Okay. So now, um, oopsie, sorry. Let's go back to the plan just to show you what we're doing here. Um, so I mentioned there are two backboards. Um, the eight foot one is on the north side, the four foot one is on um, the, side, the south side, um, and the planters proposed on both the esplanade level and on the top of the pier level are both made out of wood, and you'll see an alternative when we get to the next scheme, Oops, which we're we'll getting to right now. So scheme two is what we call the blue scheme, and I should say why blue and green? Um, the green comes from the idea of sort of reflecting uh, and bringing uh, uh, greenery, literally <coughs> greenery, to the esplanade, which has a, been a goal of, I know, many people in this room who I've met with um, previously. And the blue uh, really comes from the idea of the sky. 
and um, kind of capturing this guy uh, in, into, the, um, uh, into the quality of the esplanade, and of course when you're under the pier, uh, kind of bringing that notion of sky. So um, the backboard condition remains the same. It would be painted um, a, uh, a green color, and in this case it actually has a vine screen on, on its side, uh, and that would be covered in vines. And then in the foreground, what you would see um, looking from the esplanade uh, are uh, some evergreens and grasses. You'll notice that we also have planters here uh, on, the, uh, on the esplanade. This is a different design uh, and one that might also accommodate uh, a tree. And we'll now um, talk about the, the color scheme. So the difference here uh, in terms of the um, planting is, is really uh, what you would see first. So in the green scheme, you would see vines first. And in this scheme, you would see evergreen shrubs with vines um, behind. And we've looked at that already. So now let's get um, to what it would look like during the day. So um, again, we're using those recycled plastic lumber uh, slats, again with the LED strip lighting, uh, and in this case we're suggesting that um, the concrete uh, of the underside of the deck be painted uh, kind of a cheery light blue. And again at night it would be um, very similar, only it would have sort of a, uh, a, a light blue uh, hue to it. And this would be the um, range of colors that we're uh, suggesting here. Again, if, if uh, you don't like that color blue above you, we're also recommending uh, that a, a very light gray would perform the same function of dispersing the glow of light. We're also, I should say, I neglected to point this out, that the structure of the pier that's currently very, very dark would be painted also uh, a, uh, a light gray. And um, uh, the backboard diagram is very similar, but this gives you a sense of um, the, uh, the, what the planters would look like, both on the pier and under the pier, and these would also be <coughs> of a light gray uh, color. And then I just wanted to um, mention that the, um, the lighting design, we are starting out with the most minimal uh, lighting, which is these LED strips. However, um, we would be installing junction boxes in the event that um, folks felt that it was not sufficiently light. It's sort of a belt and suspenders approach that rarely recommends, which I, would, I also support, um, but would not be used for lighting if uh, the LED strips are uh, sufficient. And so, um, as Doris mentioned, um, this is um, the email address that you can uh, send any comments or your neighbors who aren't here tonight uh, and once they see this presentation, uh, if they care to share their opinions, um, feel free to uh, uh, come to this address with your so, thoughts. I'm sorry to interrupt. Sure. I'm no. writing this down at gbrearly.org. Not really and also, isn't facilities misspelled? Facilities is misspelled. Yeah. So, so that's all perfect. Facilities, F-A-C-I-L-I-T-I-E-S, project, P-R-O-J-E-C-T. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you know, parts of one and parts of the other. Like, for instance, like swap out a pen chart and steam blue and steam green or something like that. We are uh, open to suggestions. Uh, so, so the answer is uh, that the question, the question is whether or not we can say we like the planters from the uh, green scheme and we'd like to mix it with the uh, blue scheme overall or vice versa and uh, really is open to that suggestion. Other questions? So, uh, just, Jeff, the, yeah. so the pier is leased by the city to Brearley, is that my understanding? That, that is correct. Okay. And the change that has happened over the past two years is previously the city leased it to Brearley, but the city was supposed to maintain it. And now the city is leasing it to Brearley, and Brearley is responsible for maintaining it moving forward, and has also made a commitment to uh, renovate it. And also, we've been working quite thoroughly on this additional piece, of making sure that not only is it renovated and uh, not leaking or falling apart, but it's also uh, a positive for the and There was no way it could have been dismantled and mm -hmm. sent to New Jersey somewhere. <laughs> 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 I mean, it's an eyesore. You can't or New Jersey. And it always was. Sure. And, and so, to, to, to be fair and, and honest, uh, some of the feedback we received through Civic Task uh, was that, um, give me one moment, Jesse, do you have the Press release? Yes, please. I'll just make sure I, I quote it accurately. No. Hold on one second. It might be on the counter. There we go. <laughs> so here we go. So the feedback that we got was. 25% didn't respond to a question about the overhang, and about 36% wanted it removed, and about 24% wanted it restored, and about 15% just said that they disliked. And so we, we share this information <coughs> with the city, and uh, this, the city, the Department of Citywide Administrative Services and City Hall uh, felt that the only option on the table might be to just leave it there and lock Brearley out and not have a lease with Brearley, but they did not seem interested in a demolition uh, because that would have been a cost to the city versus just letting it self-demolish. So it, the, it, as far as my understanding from City Hall was, the option was to just not lease it and let it sit there or uh, work with a partner to try to restore it. So the million dollars are really, I'm oh, sorry. No, it's okay. So I, I just, is this on the same issue? Sure. No. <laughs> I okay. don't think so. Um, the million dollars that was going to be used to restore it could easily be used to put, to take it out, to remove it. It's, the, it's total eyesore. There's no question about it. The, so the, the, the million dollars is coming from Brearley? Uh, so, not, yeah. <laughs> so, so we're not going to destroy it because we use it. We we need we we use it actively and daily. So the million dollars really is is putting out. So we're not going to pay a million dollars to demolish it. I thought the million dollars I did. I thought the million dollars was coming from the fund from the city. No, so so it's coming from really to completely renovate it so that they're so so that it's no longer falling apart, dripping with pieces of concrete falling out heads and being caught by the uh, pigeon. So this is basically for the children that are in the school to play on the pier, correct? Yes, it's used for physical and education. And are the children going to be staying in this building or in the other building? It's used by our middle school and upper school as well. So our lower school is moving to our new building, but middle school and upper school remain here. Because in all the years I'm here, I don't think I've ever seen anybody over 10 yeah, you on that. Yeah. Probably eight. Eight. Since I've been here, which is, I started working at Brearley in June of 2014, so 2015 on, middle school has used it as well. Lower school uses it predominantly because they, they're they right on the lower floors. Middle school is very eager to make more use of it and has just not been able to due to the schedule. 
the blue cardigan followed by the pink shirt followed by one of our the black jacket followed by one of our two board members. So, um, has there been a new lease signed between the city and Rarely in you know your experience in the last two years? So the lease is right now under public review, I believe, and is it's expected to be um, complete this month. It's this been, month? but the terms are all agreed upon. Okay, and in the leasehold is 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 that where maintenance is defined? Like, what do you all intend to do in terms of your ongoing maintenance? So we have agreed. Yeah, I, so we've agreed to have a 24/7 an email address. We've agreed to respond within 48 business hours to anybody who emails in an issue or concern, and to remediate as quickly as possible. So, I guess what I'm asking is: Is there going to be some building guy, your build part of your building staff? patrolling that once a day and sweeping up all the refuse. Is that being contemplated? So no, we are not going to be cleaning it. We will be making sure, we will certainly contact the city that's responsible for cleaning it. If it's oh, exactly. Who's it's responsible for cleaning it? And what is the plan on the part of the city? <laughs> sure. So uh, one of your uh, neighbors already mentioned the fact that they were concerned that from 81st to 84th wasn't being uh, cleaned properly and uh, so we're happy to take your information as well. It is, it is main, the infrastructure belongs to DOT, the maintenance is theoretically up to parks, however parks and DOT are, uh, are in a disagreement about that, however we are, uh, we're, that's where I come in, when two agencies aren't doing what they're supposed to do. So what we've asked, what we've been asked by one of your neighbors is we're going to reach out to Parks and DOT and Department of Sanitation. Reach out to all three of them and say, whose job is it to clean this and what is your maintenance schedule? How often do you clean it? Uh, we got a very similar question like this to under the 59th Street Bridge on First Avenue. And we heard back that they, they clean it once a month. They come through and clean it once a month. And just as you are nodding now, we are now engaging in the next part of the conversation of saying, can you do it more frequently? So we're going to start the conversation, and we'll work with you on making sure. I'm following. Of course. Um, I am not the owner of the dog, so I do not patrol this area every twice a day or whatever the frequency is. <coughs> but on the few occasions when I walk the common way, especially in the past two months since it's gotten warmer, um, I don't know if anyone else has noted, but there's a regular what I would guess is probably a homeless man who makes his camp at about between four and six, seven every night. And he in the light maps out his domain and makes his spot for the night. And my concern is that seems to be a, a pretty regular thing on his part. What is the system that you all have put in place to make sure we don't have a permanent residence? Or more residents as it gets warm. More. 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 So, so this is a little bit off topic from the presentation, but that being said, I'd still like to answer it for you. I'm going to ask uh, if you could come back up because th there may be a way to deal with this together. So uh, first piece, and this is going to take a moment, um, you're dealing with the homeless crisis throughout our city, and mm -hmm. that is unquestionable. Uh, when you hear about 60,000 people who are homeless, that is not like the individual you're speaking about. That is people who are in our shelters. Mm -hmm. And so the first question that may come to mind is why don't they get a job? And the quick and well, that, that is a good, that you, that is not your question, but the first answer is 23,000 of them are children. They woke up this morning and they went to a public school. 17,000 are their family members, and these are people who are being displaced from their homes by development and a lack of affordable housing. And then we have about uh, 9,000 single men, I believe 3,000 single women. You can get this census report every morning from DHS uh, and Department of Health Services. There's about 3,800 uh, folks who sleep on the street at night. They're considered unsheltered. Uh, so that being said, uh, this is one of my questions that I like to ask people. Who here, when you see somebody who is panhandling, gives $20 or more? Okay, who gives $10 or more? Five? 
Okay, one dollar or more? Who gets the change in their pocket? Who gets food? You go into the store, you buy food, or if they have food with them. Okay, so that, that was a leading question. I'm an attorney, it wasn't fair. And so what I would say is panhandling is protected as speech by the Supreme Court, and that is how they are making a living. And there are panhandlers in this neighborhood who earn more than you do. And so if you are giving them money, you are paying them to panhandle, you are engaging in a transaction. You are feeling good about yourself because you gave them money, and they're feeling good about themselves because they made money. Uh, and so if you want to help, there's 311. There's a 311 app. The city will send, in this part of the city, Goddard Riverside, they're a nonprofit, and they will show up with the van, and they will say, would you like three square meals a day? Can we pay a family member to take you in? Can we give you money for rent? It's called a link voucher. Would you like to go back to school? We would love to pay for vocational training. Do you need medication? Are you interested in rehab? Whatever you want, we will give it to you if you come off the street. And when we make that offer, would you like to know what the most frequent answer is? No, no, no. No, thank you. So we've been told by DHS, we had a homeless forum about a month ago that it takes about 200 contacts before a person says yes. Uh, but that being said, we're also working with faith-based institutions in a project called Ethos, the Site Task Force for Homeless Outreach and, um, and Services that I started about three years ago before the mayor really took on the homeless crisis. And uh, we work with folks like Church of the Epiphany who do a soup kitchen and so many others to see if we can build a relationship. Um, and then so why I asked our, our partners at really to come is just what we can do is, I'm imagining that this person is here at night, but at some point I'm imagining your security asks them to, to go. So, call 311. So great. So you're calling 311, <coughs> which means, and then 311 is showing up and offering the person assistance, and then in lieu of assistance, they aren't taking it, but it appears that they're leaving. Yes. So it sounds like, and it sounds like whether you're using this facilities email or um, there, is there a, an appropriate person if somebody is concerned about this individual uh, who who's, needs help, uh, who their contact can be so that they can check in, get a copy of the 301 complaint number, or just work with Rearly on the Facilities split. Project So Rearly.org. So my security staff monitors under the pier while they're here. They're not here. We don't have 24-7 security. So the first thing they do in the morning they come here usually between 7 and 7.30, is they check the area under the pier. If they find that there, there is one particular person who has been under our pier more than once, they immediately call the one and you know, try and get somebody to come help. So in other words, you're telling me that for five days a week, there's a regular check on the promenade. Right. Not the whole promenade, but just that yeah. section. Yes, yeah. understood. And so I think I think both the blue and the green are sensational plants. I think they're lovely. I don't care which color combination. I just think that one of the reasons you get so much feedback about this thing <clears> being an eyesore is that it's neglected, and it, it's a wash in candy wrappers and people and dog feces, and I think that needs to be attended to in a systematic way. I, I agree and thank you for the feedback. I think one other piece is after this meeting, one of the other things that we do is what's interesting about this neighborhood is we may have one, two, maybe a handful of people who may be panhandling or, or sleeping on our street, but because there's 168,000 people that are represented who live right on top of each other, when there's one person here on the Esplanade and everyone in the neighborhood walks past, it feels, it magnifies the problem. So what we can do is we'll work with you, we'll work with Greeley, we will get information about who this person is, I will take it to the uh, Commissioner of Homeless Services, Steve Banks, and we will figure out a plan so that we can get an intervention with this person, and we'll also take it back to the faith-based institutions to say, does anyone know this person? And we'll work on building a relationship and seeing if we can get them the help that they need, and then we will use your tax dollars to try to find them housing and get their life back on track if that's okay with you. Uh, there was there was an order. So, sir? Um, forgive me for backing up a little bit, but I'm trying to get behind some of the uh, statements that are being made. How much 
space, well, the, the trees and grasses and everything else that you're uh, planning to put on top of that. And I agree with this woman that said it looks good. Uh, will, will that take from the existing facility as, as it now is? And to that end, if it's substantial, you're going to have even less space than you, you will have less space than you had before. You will have bigger kids than you had in general before. Um, and it seems to me that you're building this great big building across the street, that you require a lot of real estate all around the neighborhood for athletic facilities and this and that and the other thing. And surely there is a better place for those older kids, which will now be the ones using this, uh, to, to, to use. And right now it's very busy, of course. And that's just fine. But that's going to change. That's today's uh, situation. Tomorrow, when the buildings are completed and you're, you're, you're back in the groove, somewhere there's got to be space enough between the facilities you're already planning on building or already have already owned to, to take these kids and to let them use that. The older kids use that, which is what uh, apparently is, is, is the plan, but to, to put it somewhere else and just Take the money and, 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 and change the configuration of one of the buildings you already own. So, and, the other and then, it, then the whole thing is clear. Now I know we can't make you do that, but it seems just common sense to me. So the other facility we have is at 87th Street. That is the only use the microphone. Autonomous. The, the only other facility that we have, that barely has, we have this building, we have the new building, we're building across the street, and then we have the field house at 87th Street. The use of our field house is mostly for tournaments and for, we don't use, we are actually building a regulation size gym across the street because within our school schedule, within the school day from 8.10 to 3.30, we don't have enough time to transport there and transport back and get in our whole curriculum. So having the facilities right here and adjacent is critical to our program. It's program driven, um, having it here. We don't have the time in our schedule to cover everything that we need to from the curriculum and spend the 20 minutes to get over to the field house and the 20 minutes back. Is there going to be a gym facility in the new building that's under construction now? There is a, a yes, there is an indoor gym. And the kids that use this generally use it for no more than an hour to an hour and a half a day. Pardon? They never use this more than an hour to two hours a day at times. So we have to live with this ugly structure to facilitate really schools of having young kids who won't even be there anymore. Spend an hour a day, maybe, on that group. So it's a critical part of our program. I, you know, it's it's a curricular decision, which I'm not part of that aspect. And shouldn't the lease have been public information so that people could be there before you saw the lease with the city? I mean, that's a public sure. public thing. I don't understand the whole thing. Sure. It's a so, thing I saw. Uh, so, Josh is uh, from my office. The gentleman that's I over there. It has a clipboard. If uh, you could please sign your information if you're interested in seeing a copy of the lease, if you're interested in the uh, public hearing, uh, write your information down. I believe it's, it's coming up in it's either May 23rd or May 24th, but we will share all the information with you. The reason we wanted to do this is to make sure that you had your opportunity to comment both here with Fairly, but also to make sure that you, you still had a chance to, to participate in the public leasing process. So Josh is going to hand you the Just clipboard. Yeah. What, what is the answer to the first part of the question? Two foot six at each end, so that's a total of five feet. And 
if I could just add oh, a few, no, just, no, the two just add the two minutes. minutes. So one other thing, just as um, one of my colleagues reminded me to mention, the, the reason rarely has the pier, the reason the city built it and leased it to rarely back um, is because we rarely used to have waterfront access. We actually had stairs and a pier, which is why we call it a pier, because it's really not a pier, it's a structure. We call it the pier because rarely used to have a pier and access to the water. When the FDR was built, the concession from the city for losing our waterfront and having this built was the pier. So that is the, and it is exclusively for playground use, and there are some you know, very strict ways that we could use it, and it was built and leased to rarely because of our loss of the waterfront. So I, I have not been as fair to folks, so I believe you are next, as uh, uh, I have to make the committee board a Okay, if, if, if you go next, so after this person. Uh, yes. Okay, two things. One, I have no problem. I'm on the problem like three or four times a day. <coughs> and I don't have a problem. I mean, I, I like the idea of fixing it up. The only concern I have is the planters that are actually on the promenade. You know, during the day, the girls run on the promenade. They come out there and then run in. And it's taking space the bikes, the dogs, the people, the kids. So that's taking up space that probably we need. Anything, we can't make the promenade any smaller, is what I'm saying. Um, and I don't think it adds that much, truthfully. And it's going to be a great place for the dogs to leave their legs anyway, <laughs> to be honest. So that's my comment. And the other thing, I, and I do like this color combination. Yes, yes I do. I like it a lot. Um, as far as the man in the park, he's been there for about 20 years. He's the same man. He is harmless. He is very nice. A lot of people know him. He actually protects us because he sits in the park and if another homeless person comes there, he gets rid of them. <laughs> so he's really more helpful than he is harmful. Uh, so, so thank you. Perhaps. I understand they tried to get to remove him over the years. So, Colonel, is to, to criminalize or, or anyone? But it sounds like you may have a personal relationship. It sounds like <laughs> I don't. a lot of people. And it sounds like some of your neighbors are concerned. It sounds like Fairly is using 311, but God of Riverside hasn't made the same headway you may have made over the past 20 years. So perhaps if you don't mind sharing with Jesse, my chief of staff, who's here, some of the information, and maybe you can help be our bridge. And then say, you're welcome to still stay here, but let's see if we can get make sure that you have food, that you have Medicaid, that you have health insurance, that, that your needs are provided for as we try to see if we can. He won't take any food from anybody. I've offered him food, he'll say, no. Okay, well, let's, let's, see what we can, let's see what we can do to help, but thank you for the feedback. I have a question and a comment. My first question relates specifically to the design. Um, the, the fence around, I'm talking about the upper part now, uh, I think we can all agree the, the existing black chain link fence is, is really offensive, particularly for those of us that live in the building right next door and look down upon this. So can you give us a little bit more detail on what the material will be uh, uh, used as far as the fencing is concerned? Uh, and my, my other comment is this. Uh, I notice almost every day that when the, the, the little girls are out there um, and they're, you know, finish their day of playing, their blocks, their tricycles, everything that they use is strewn all over the playground and it's left there. There is no one that at the end of the day comes in, picks it up, and takes it in or push, you know. Uh, so I would ask, would the, would the school kindly ask a custodian or someone at the end of the school day or when the girls are done to bring in or, or somehow, you know, put aside some of their blocks and, and, and bikes and all that stuff? Because it looks terrible. Sure. We can ask Thank the lower school that would be great. to yeah. work with the girls to bring yeah. everything yeah. in. I will tell you this, I'm a real estate broker and I fortunately have the, the, um, the honor of selling apartments, most of these apartments, and many of them do, you know, next door, look down upon this, and there is no question, it, it's an eyesore, we all know it, and it impacts resale value. 
it absolutely does. So I applaud you for doing this. We really, we need to clean this up because it's, it's just terrible. It really we is. Agree. Yeah. We agree. It's terrible. Yeah. So the, the fence that's yes. there presently is a um, two inch by two inch diamond mesh um, made out of uh, nine gauge metal. That's a diamond. <coughs> the proposed, um, thank you. Um, this is a, uh, this is four inches by two inches. Is it metal? What is it the material? It is metal with a vinyl cladding. But okay. the actual diameter of these is much less than the current um, two inch mesh. What color is the vinyl cladding? Black. It, is there anything to neutralize it anymore? It, does it, must, must it be black? I mean, I don't know if um, it's... It can it's also come in a gray, mm -hmm. um, if you would prefer. That is another option. But this yeah. certainly feel free to it would certainly be better than the black. You can add that to the email if there is a preference for gray over black. Well, I, the, I mean, I don't have the, unfortunately, I don't have the advantage of knowing, you know, visually what it would look like, but I would, I would ask the designer if in gray, would it, anything that can make it disappear as much as possible, would the gray neutralize it more? Yeah. I think it would, um, if you think about it up against yeah. the sky. Yes. Um, Isn't it intended to match the new fencing that's on the ramp? Oh, who cares? Oh, no, that's, I mean, it's the similar it's the same. Was. It's the same fence. Yes. Um, but so if somebody wants whether to the vinyl clad right. color matters so much. But it's that same kind of fence. If you want to see the fence, I think there's a strong fire. preference yeah. to, to for the gray, which matches the other fence. Yeah, well, it certainly would make it look, it look more disappearing rather yeah. than have a stock yeah. black. I, I don't want to go to that voices. Okay. Um, also, things that have been said to go back to um, one. If you need the information, I can tell you who cleans this section. The DOT, there's a small, I think they call them Italian, something crazy like that, like an army name. And they're in the Bronx. They have all of the Bronx, and they have these four blocks. So for them to come into the city more than maybe twice a year, I spoke to the gentleman. He threw his hands up and said, I don't have time, and I don't have men. Okay, so now you know who cleans it and why it's not getting cleaned. Um, then, uh, in terms of um, the children, I also live on Gracie Terrace, right on the Esplanade, <coughs> second floor. I've been there 30 years. The children never used to play on the Esplanade. Now you say you're building a gym, you're keeping this. Do the kids have to still have recess? They do track out there. It's not a park. You have a park right there. Why can't they play in the park? And they're noisy. It's not like they're not noisy. They cheer, they yell, the teacher blows a whistle right under an apartment building. It just, it's not made, put it that way. So I could certainly go back to the division heads and give them this feedback, but the, the you know, in looking at our schedule and our curriculum, it has been a critical part of the program. But now you're going to have a gym. But so we are going to lose a gym in this building, so we're offsetting. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, mean, I don't know what deal you made to be able to build your structure. I think the city should have been more involved with the community um, to, to address these issues. What is being done for the community? You're doing all this for real. Um, it just, it's just mind-boggling to me. Um, you said the other part of the Esplanade. They've got from the hospital, they got $30 million from this. This is a residential neighborhood. Was anyone, any corporation, anyone solicited to help with this small portion and to help even, you know, with this monstrosity? Uh, so, like, in terms of the play area, I guess one thing, if you could ask, this, uh, ask the uh, faculty side. Uh, there, there is the sunken play area uh, with the hockey rink and the basketball courts of whether or not it's possible to bring people that one block over north. Uh, that, that might be helpful. In terms of the uh, building uh, across the street, so you, you may be following some of the work we've been doing in 58 Sutton where somebody tried to put up a 1,000 foot tower 
Uh, there's two different <coughs> strategies in governance. Some elected officials, and, and this is actually one of my community board questions, uh, but some folks would say, well, if how tall is too tall? Is 210 feet too tall? Is 500 feet too tall? Is 700 feet too tall? Is 1,000 feet too tall? And then I usually follow that up with, what if it has affordable housing? What if it has a school? What types of give backs make it okay for an entire neighborhood to never see the sun again? And so I, I end up just saying, let's see, make sure that buildings are contextual and part of the neighborhood. So this building is as of right. I usually don't say as of right is of okay, but it's as of right and it's capped at believe at 210 feet tall. And if I also believe it is going to be only 185 feet or just that, 197. 197, and I actually said to Greeley, Chapin's expanding for a third time, why not just build to your full 210 so we don't have you ever come back for that extra 10 feet. But, um, so the building is, is within the height context, and uh, we have a lot of buildings going up. I think that this neighborhood, we're actually doing an event with Civitas, and they will actually tell you. Uh, so, so Alexander, how tall is too tall? <laughs> So I, I'll say two things. Um, one, in the back of the room, we do have a little flyer on June 6th. If that's an issue that you want to talk about, um, over at Lennox Hill Hospital, we're going to have a whole panel. It's just that question, how tall is too tall? Um, we're going to have people that like 200, 400, 800. <coughs> so it'll be an open, it'll be an open discussion. Um, the other thing I'll also say in general to, to some of these questions, you know, when I started and I said a few words, I said it's not perfect. And I think that from our side, you know, we did a master plan a long, long time ago. The council member talked about how bad the Esplanade was. If you think it is now, it was. And so, you know, we see this as an improvement, and we see, you know, I think when you have some lighting under there, it'll help maybe keep away some homeless. Um, when you have a space that has a little bit better um, ambiance, then you may have, you know, more people using the Esplanade, which makes it typically safer. Um, and just aesthetically, we had, the, the aesthetics from realtors and stuff, I mean, aesthetically, this will look better than what, you know, much better than what we have. So, you know, when we were evaluating it, we had to look at all these things, too. And um, the fact that they're going to maintain it is, is really key because, quite honestly, if the city did this exact same project, it would be garbage when this councilman's gone and two down the road come in. And so I think the, that's the joy. The other, the other piece is just uh, in terms of the partnership that we see on the Southern Esplanade, uh, we have Rockefeller, which is a, a huge, and literally, it's the Rockefellers. So uh, they, and HSS isn't quite the Rockefellers, but they're also doing a lot. And so we, we came to Rearley, and to, to be fair and honest, I, I have had more than one Brearley graduate, more than one parent with a child at Brearley, and, and more, than, more than a few uh, folks reach out and say, Brearley is a school, why are you asking them to do more? They're, they're a nonprofit. So that being said, I, I, this is, so, so, so I would just say, we're working with that, and then they're also doing the planters, which we're talking about, and then also working with conservancy and trying to be better stewards. So they are not necessarily going to do the city's job of cleaning up all the junk that they want, but we're hoping to bring them in. We're hoping that they want to work with. And what we've also found is that whether it's HSS or Rockefeller, once they do the work and once they're doing the maintenance, uh, I, I don't know if we still have Jennifer here, but she can talk about how those folks have been key members of the Friends of the East River Esplanade moving forward. I just want to follow up on the keeping it clean. I just don't, I hate to be negative right off the start. I do not have faith in them taking care of it. it it's very convenient that that netting that was horrible came down two days ago. 
Isn't that convenient? So we didn't have to look at it at this meeting. I have called, I have been over the years to just fix it. Lift it up, it's hanging down, it's this, it's that. Kids jump up on it. Never even a response. Not even the decency of a response to say, we'll take care of it, we won't take care of it. So how are we to know that they're now, all of a sudden, why wouldn't they have taken care of that? It was the face of their school. I mean, it's really, doesn't make sense to that. So a year ago, September, really requested from DCAS to replace the netting at our expense. It took until just recently to get that approval. It's scheduled to be replaced on May 16th. That's after this meeting. That's, it just turns out that the netting came down this week, but the replacement's not scheduled until next week, and we just got approval. We would have done it a year ago, September. What's the approval from? DCAS. They're the, they're, the, they're the Department of Citywide <coughs> Administrative Services. If you Google Department of Citywide Administrative Services. Okay. Well, that's the point. I mean, it's just unbelievable that they really just so, had to be a good neighbor when they we were to. So, so, so I think Without what, their approval, we, it's, as Councilmember Kayla said, they were responsible for the underside. We were responsible <coughs> for the top, and we are not allowed without their approval. It's in our lease to do that work without their approval. Additionally, what we're getting from really in terms of so, right, so now we will. something, so I'll just tell you a little bit more, just just full disclosure, because I'm not sure I had a chance to share at the beginning of the meeting. We're recording, so this will actually be on the internet forever. <laughs> folks can share and so that folks can others see the presentation too, and the presentation will be online, but also your voice will be there too. But uh, Something we did with Rearly is the maintenance was very important to me, and then also having a feedback loop, uh, knowing that if somebody reached out to Rearly, that you had to hear back within 48 hours, and that our office would be looped in. And one of the things that we're hoping to do is also, not on the renderings, but hopefully there'll be signage that says, if you have a concern, you can reach out to Rearly. We'll also be listed as a contact number, and hopefully folks, if there's a problem, will be able to have somebody they can reach out to, not a faceless city agency, but really, really is on the hook, and they won't necessarily be able to uh, fix everything, but when it comes to this specific structure, they, they will be there. And, um, believe it or not, it was the first of its kind lease where they attached a commitment letter from deep, from really to my office, and the first time that they've ever had a 48-hour turnaround, because the city of New York doesn't believe in 48-hour turnarounds. We try to get potholes fixed, and we're good at it, but. Um, it's why, some, why I'm excited about the public-private partnership. Uh, Tricia, you've been very patient. And Tricia is the chair of the Parks Committee and Committee Board of Aid, and we're grateful to have her here tonight. Uh, thank you for your presentation. I would actually, my first question is about timing. Um, so what is the, what is the time frame? Is this the, what are your next steps? So our next steps are replacing the netting, which will happen next week. And then we are targeting to do the project that you're seeing here, summer 2019. So um, we will start in June, and we will have it complete before school starts in September. Next year. Yes. Next summer, not this summer. I would love for you, if you would be willing to come to our parks committee meeting um, in next this month or next month to make this presentation so that it reaches more neighbors. I think it would be very helpful. Um, my other question is about maintenance. Again, um, I appreciate the money that you, and the time and commitment that you're making to maintain the top of it and the structure underneath. But my concern is about those planters. Um, I'm worried that they're going to be havens for garbage and, and things like that. Um, do you have? And so I, there is no way that we really can commit to cleaning those planters that are under that are adjacent to their property? So some of the plantings that are being selected are to discourage. It'll be pretty full from what Sydney has has proposed. And then yeah, for the planters that are right here, we will we will monitor that. So those like if we were to do this plan, those four that I see, yes. you would you would clean those. Yes. Okay. Great. Um and then my other question was with the, with the first design option that you presented. I know that you had talked about um, ways to disencourage roosting, but it seemed, and I love the green actually, but I, 
it seems to me like that that just screams kind of like a haven for birds and vermin to like to roost in to the green. Is Actually, that um, we did um, a very serious ornithological study um, of the dimension of a pigeon, um, of a small pigeon, uh, and the distance between the slats is such that um, a pigeon cannot roost, nor a sparrow, by the way. Um, so that is how it, so right now it's a, it's a, like an H beam, it's actually an I beam. So we're feeling, what the pigeons are roosting on is the flange on either side of the eye. I can't, I don't have enough arms to show you. Um, so we're filling in this dimension, thank you, I need you above, please. <laughs> okay, so it looks like this. And we're filling in that on both sides. So there's no place for a bird to... to what about other vermin? Like, I'm not really familiar with how grave of a concern this is, but if you're, if you're doing all this greenery, or is there at all a concern with mice or rats or anything else like that, if, uh, making homes in the plantings? In the plantings? Yeah, in the... In the I, I can't... Right. Um, well, yeah. words. <laughs> uh, where there's food, there is vermin. Well, I guess my question is, what is the high one for this? I mean, that's this on steroids. So what is the high one? Do they, do they have vermin? Yes, they do. There is really not a place in the city that doesn't. <laughs> Um, my just my final thought on this, and the thank you. Um, I, I agree. That I think that both designs are, are lovely and certainly an improvement than before. Um, it, it seems like from the conversation that it would be very helpful to have some sort of community liaison or point person at really so that mm -hmm. so that as as things come up, that's great. we should we should make sure that everybody has your personal your not your personal but you know your your email address and your number because it does seem like they're just. A lot of what I'm hearing is just as exasperation because it, they've sent emails over months or over years and they, they don't even have, I understand that it's DCOS that, that had the problem, but if they got a response through email or some sort of like acknowledgement of their concerns, it might have de-escalated the situation a little bit. So moving forward, um, especially since Fairly seems to be so willing to be a good community partner and a better, a better neighbor moving forward, it would be very helpful to have your email address and your phone number so that as these as both park or parks issues and playground issues and other things arise, it would be very helpful to have someone respond to that and have a personal and that is what the facilities project email is. So and facilities project at really dot org. org spelled correctly. So that is what that, that address is. Part of the reason it's not my personal email and it's that, although anybody who's gotten our communications also has my personal contact information. I'm not opposed. But if for some reason I am not here, the facilities project at really dot org email is also monitored by my partner in crime, Joe David. And so between the two of us, I think we have gotten back to people within hours, not within days. We've had a lot of communication with the community as a result of our project. And um, we've gotten a lot of really positive feedback because the response time is much less than 48 hours. So that is the best way, because then it is assured that somebody will get it in a very timely manner. It's in my personal email, and I happen to be out of the country and out of communication, which I'd love to be, but it doesn't happen that often. It, I want to make sure that it's something where it won't get lost till I come back. I can tell you, I'm sure Joe may come up and talk to you after the meeting because really does have a, a general email and I'm surprised because I haven't gotten any emails from you. I, and I'm knowing Joe, she hasn't. So I'm not sure where your communications have been going. But we are both, you know, really looked up online like different <coughs> and that's where I send them. So maybe we could touch base afterwards sure. because we are committed, really is committed to this neighborhood and to being a good neighbor. Um, and so we try and we, we will get back to you and say we can't do that or, you know, it's out of it, but we will get back to you. We always communicate back. Um, yeah, I mean, our, our active partnership is, is about two years old. And um, sometimes we get back to people almost in minutes and they can't actually believe it. So we're committed. <coughs> Uh, to that. 
Okay, so it seems like everyone's gotten to speak at least once. So just, one, just one last question. With all the money that clearly makes, I don't see why you can't commit to clean that. Exactly. I don't understand. It's not ours to clean, and we are a nonprofit. We make from other money. So uh, there was one person who had a yeah. chance to speak, so I want to promote new voices. Uh, uh, it, it, it's a dark area. The kid, the, uh, the designer, def definitely a, a great improvement. I think getting it as light as possible on the underside of another, I think is you're trying to go. I would even say I would go even a little lighter if you can in some way to create a lighter. One of the thoughts I had was there's an area under there if you can just where you know, you cast the shadows. Is there any way of using some reflective material on the surface? To kick back more and create a more a lighter space throughout because you can have half of it in shadows at certain times. So I don't know if there's any way of creating lightening up that area in there at all. That was one thought. The other, um, as far as the wire mesh, the wire mesh, the uh, stainless steel wire mesh on the pedestrian uh, bridge is a fairly see through compared to once you put a cladding on material on it, it tends to be, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, you can't see, it, it's cladding and burden. And so, I guess, is, it, is that a safety factor, having to have that kind of person no, using these stainless? Because the stainless, I think, is more see-through mm -hmm. when you And uh, I think that's something you might be improving in that area. Well, if I can ask my final question, conversations to step outside uh, so that we can hear it inside. So I just want to echo. So I think uh, the goal at all times was it to for there to be a consistency between both. So I think if the planning can be removed altogether, uh, and I think that would be amazing. And then the other one was just I didn't know what the city was doing. The underside, as I recall, the the, the concrete and all is not. That well face under that. I don't know if there's any, I realize that's the whole problem with that 81 and 84 is an issue. I don't know while anything is being done on this, whether there's any way of being able to put fuel to the fire, uh, if you will, on, on parks or someone else where it's in charge, to see if it can be done as an integral piece, if you will. If you're improving one, it would be nice if it could be done the whole thing, if you're done together. I, I agree with you, and I will continue my advocacy for more funding for the Esplanade for up to 150 million. And uh, I, I would like to measure my success not in millions but in billions. So I, I hope to uh, continue to work with you uh, and others to advocate. Uh, okay. Uh, it is getting close to 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 it is 7:30. So before we get too far, I just want to start to just get a sense from folks. So we've given everyone a chance to ask questions. Some folks have expressed preferences one way or another. So um, I, I want to just echo the question about uh, lighting uh, and, and lighting underneath. So I think the concern is that it's still in the shadow, uh, I guess for both, could we do a rendering perhaps of what it would look like if we left the LEDs on during the day and if it would have an impact on the shadows here and would really be open to running some of the LEDs during the day in order to make it brighter. We could test it a couple of times, and if people say, ah, you're just wasting electricity, we won't do it, and if it actually brightens things up, we can. With that, the, that's part of it. I don't know how much. It's really casting being able to get back towards this. This, this is a, a morning shadow. Uh, once you're at noon for the rest of the day, it will, will be a place uh, that can be uh, uh, a shielded. I, I, for one, love love sunlight as much as possible. But I've been advised by both city class and parks department it's good to have places that folks can enjoy the outdoors without being uh, without being under the sun. Mm -hmm. um, but sir, to your uh, question, um, so at the very end, um, I had mentioned that. Oops, that's like. Um, this situation. So this fixture, uh, we had originally proposed that fixture to be mounted on the rearly side to compensate for the shadow. Okay. And so that, as I said, that uh, those uh, junction boxes for those fixtures, and here you see where they would be mounted. This is the water over here, 
Um, so this is the darkest area over here. So um, this is a, a looking down, and that's the light spectrum of each of those fixtures. So that will be um, available, uh, and um, uh, so, so. it turns out that it's you know too dark, or the shadow mm -hmm. contrast is too great. Um, we have a, a late comer, but we want to give everyone a chance to speak or ask a question before we. I'd like to survey folks on colors and other questions as a group. Uh, Ken Karadik, do you have a Yes. Uh, this wall of green, if it were painted very light, would you act as a reflect on the way the shadow? Um, also, if you had some other kind of material on here, so then these masonry here, um, that also might be done. That would, that would cut your cost, but it would not cost like electricity would cost. So, so yes, I, I, so what Ken Craddock asked is, is there a treatment that could be provided on the side of the building? And so as, as we're looking out, we, we have the bars. And uh, believe, it or, believe it or not, so on, on Cornell's campus, they have this beautiful unobstructed view from their building. But because of Passive House standards, they have different slats that are done in design on it. So it really is open to, so, so I guess one question would be, if, if, if you could help us do something different than the bars and, in a way that provides the same security, but also makes it feel less like a prison and more uh -huh. like uh, a, a design element, whether it's a light colored uh, reflector or, or what have you, in the same style. Has anyone seen the Cornell Tech uh, slats at all? Or? No. no. I, I would also add that the reflective paint that Sydney is suggesting for the underside will also dramatically impact. So just getting this top part lighter will do a lot of what you're saying. I'm not sure in terms of what the exterior facade and what we could do that wouldn't become a further maintenance nightmare in the future. So I don't want to commit to saying we'll make it lighter. We can look into it. But certainly getting the underside, the flat portions, of the pure structure, a lighter, more reflective color will absolutely help for light and get it lighter underneath. And in terms of further maintenance down the road, if these are pre-white rather than painted, because the paint then will chip, yes. so you want to have them as a material that starts that way. Yes. Okay, so I'd like to just... Can you just repeat the email address? I'm sorry. It's uh... facilities, F-A-C-I-L-I-T, IES project P R O J E C T at Brearley.org. Thank you. And if you copy me, B Kalos at BenKalos.com, we'll work together and uh, make sure that uh, everyone is, is being responded to. So just feel free to copy me. So I guess uh, let's. This is this is the part I was most excited for. Oh. So we're going to do one one piece at a time. Uh, so uh, and so I guess first piece is uh, in terms of uh, the plantings on top. We have one option, which is uh, and Cindy, you, you can you can do this uh, either or if you wish, because I don't want to. Uh, I, I, I don't have the expertise, but in one option we seem to have the, the overgrown effect. And, uh, we well, have the, um, the difference is in this scheme the vines are on the uh, exterior fence, and so on the other one they are not. So uh, for, this is the other piece. So the, the first question is would you like to have the vines facing the pedestrians walking by, or would you like to? So, okay, who would like to? C, uh, option. Option one. Option one. Uh, option one, can I see a show of hands? Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. And, and then, will you have a watering method so that they'll stay alive? Yes. <laughs> and then uh, for option two, uh, where it's internal facing, so we have one for option two. 
Okay, so that, that is the first piece. Uh, the next piece is let's work our way down. And so we're, I'm, I, I, I'm afraid of upsetting the, the designers here, but so it seems that for the planters themselves, and, and we, we can get into whether we want planters below or not, but it appears that one proposal which fits in with the green, and I don't know if it'll fit in with the blue, uh, so I don't know if this is on the table or not, is do we want the, the wood feeling, or do we prefer, is it a concrete, or is it a gray, or what is the... It is a um, synthetic material. Or do, so do we want the, the option one of wood, option two of the synthetic gray modern. Uh, so, okay, option one for the wood feeling. It's not going to last. Okay, so two, and then option two for the synthetic. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. Uh, now working our way down uh, in terms of just the slats. Do folks like option one, which is the uh, green theme uh, here, which is here? So just the external facing slats. Who here would like the green theme? Option one, one, two, three, four, and then for option to the blue theme. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. I'd like to add my book two, if I may, six, seven. Okay. And one, two, three, four. Okay, <laughs> okay. so, so, so four six to seven. Six to seven is close. Everybody should make sure they send in their email choices. <laughs> which one, which side did you want? The blue. Okay, so, so six to eight, so it is, it is a nail biter. Uh, and then for the underneath, we have the uh, we have a choice of the light. This is the light green. Yes. Well, uh, excuse me, but green this you can't mix. Yeah. Got to do this. We can't okay. green. So, so fair enough. Have so. a choice, however, of the color that matches the slats. Mm -hmm. um, so it could be green or light gray, or the other one, blue or light gray. Okay, so, so of choice. the people who voted for green, so that's six of you, would you like this area to be light green? That's option one. Yes. And light gray is option two. So all in favor of the people who voted for green, you want the light green. Okay, that is five. And then does anyone want the gray? Okay, one person wants the gray. We'll darken the whole attitude. Well, it's a silver gray. Even even if it's okay. it's how like that's different. And then on this side of the people who voted blue, how many would like the the reflective blue? Okay, so that is four. That's, and I will add my vote, so that is five. And then how many would prefer? I guess this is, would be the the gray color available. Well, it's the lightest possible. That one. It would be much like the silver that you're speaking okay. about with the fence. And anyone interested in of the of the gray? Option two, okay. Uh, now, on the Esplanade portion, uh, we are talking about planters. So I just want to respond to some of the folks. So we got planters in the bike lanes on First Avenue when I first got elected. And we partnered with friends, sorry, Upper Greenside, they're not friends, they're just Upper Greenside, Sarah Gallagher. And uh, we, we worked with residents to adopt the islands and we're not seeing trash accumulating there. We are seeing dogs getting, uh, because there are no fences. So on 2nd Avenue, you will notice that there's now trees, there's fences around the planters, and we're working on getting those adopted. And we're also spending money on getting fences. And on um, every single tree pit we can in the district, if there is a tree pit that is missing a tree, let me know, I will get you a tree. If there's a tree pit that has a tree but doesn't have a fence and you want to adopt it, we can. But what we are seeing is you can take methods to make it less likely that people will um, litter. And that being said, um, so I guess i uh, just going to regret this, but I do believe in democracy. How many folks would just want, want zero planters whatsoever on the Esplanade? So that's one, two, three, four, five. How many? are okay with planters in this portion of the Esplanade. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Jesse doesn't count as a voter because he doesn't live here, he just <laughs> works here. Uh -huh. Can we ask how many people live in that building right there that will be most affected by the planter? Mm -hmm. 
George, uh, who, who lives right next door. <laughs> That's helpful. Is, 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 is this by any chance your window? Is that, is that your window? Yeah, right next door. So that one, one over, the one south, one, one south. Okay, so this is the, the apartment right against the building. So that is you? Not that one, next to it. One down. Okay, it's not in the photo. Okay. So, fair enough. So, are you concerned about having a taller tr uh, tree one, here? One, not so much the height as bugs, rodents, the smell on the planters, okay. you know, a, a squirrel now can climb up the tree and onto the railing. Okay. I mean, we had issues I had. years ago when we had scaffolding, I had a raccoon oh, on no. my terrace. <laughs> so, that's just giving another outlet okay. for something to climb. Um, okay. Just to say that there's also a version with shrubs. Yep. So, so that, that was yeah. the next place we were going to go to. So option one is... Uh, but the shrubs could come in a, in, a, in a container that wasn't wood because the wood will deteriorate. Yeah. Right, so I, I, I believe... So, so you're just ignore, ignore below here. So that's going to be the modern planter. That's what we... Yeah. we will, that, that is what the room, it is likely to be. That is what those in this room have shared. Uh, folks will be giving feedback. Different call boards are likely to write letters, and uh, democracy is democracy, and hopefully we can work together. So it would just be from here up, we'd be using modern planters. So option one is shrubs. Yeah, sure. So, to, to be frank, I mean, I'm let me find out from here. Like, are you open to moving these closer to the entrances to the esplanade versus right under the pier? Um, we definitely can't put it under the pier because the plants will die. So, sorry, right mm -hmm. next. So, versus adjacent, immediately adjacent to the pier, would you be open to putting it closer to the street entrance? Yes. Okay. So, okay. Who here would like to see the planters immediately next to the pier? Uh, okay. I don't see. I see one hand. Who would like to see it? So, if you look out this window over here and they're off camera, so it would be about five, ten feet over out that window over here, close to the entrance to the esplanade. Does anyone want to see that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Well, yeah. yeah. There's no reason to have it. The egress and entry. Mm -hmm. So, so they they would they would be right it's next to the right on they would, either they side. Would you, they would greet you as you be next to there or whatever. Right, but once the ramp is built there, they would greet you on either side. Is anyone interested in that? Okay, so that's one one. So it sounds I heard somebody say there's too much democracy, <laughs> or not that it's too much democracy, but this feels silly. So. Um, I'm still thinking about the fact that 36 percent of the people in the survey last year voted to take down the uh, over, uh, overhang, and we were ignored. It was I, the highest number. So this is a new joke. I, I, this is a joke saying whether we like this tree yeah. or that tree or to that be color honest, or color. To be honest, I'm, I don't know a lot about this either, but I think more light would be best, optimally. And the panels that are coming down from that, I mean, does that platform have to be there? And then <laughs> the panels that are sure, so, so in, 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 at least in the we, we would say this is asked and answered by, uh, I don't believe you were here for no, that one. So, so uh, we, we got the feedback. I tried to be very transparent with everyone and honest about what's going on. I've been honest about the fact that we did provide this feedback to City Hall that this mayor, the same mayor who wants to build the garbage dump down the street, uh, the city hall said that that 